It's Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to continue our study of mass. So in my last video, we, we drew mass, uh, some classic, some typical uh, types of mass that you would see and some of our favorite superheroes like Captain America, uh, the classic uh, around the eyes domino mask that would be worn by Robin or um, next to Cap here. It kind of looks like Cap's old sidekick Bucky. Um, and the, the variation on Cap's mask with the exposed hair as, as would be worn uh, by Kid Flash. So there's a couple of other masks, um, a, couple of, a couple of big ones, really. So I thought we would uh, give this a, a part two and we would look up, we would uh, check out how to draw some of these other masks that are still out there. So, and I gotta give a shout out, a big thank you to um, loyal channel subscriber Robert for suggesting this topic. Uh, I hope uh, Robert Robert wrote in and actually told asked me to cover this. So uh, so so I am. Uh, Robert also asked for a video on noses, and um, we will be doing that specifically. Uh, so. Keep tuning in, Robert, and thanks for thanks for the idea. So, much as as with the the mass that I went over in my last video, as usual, what I do is I draw much of the face uh, first without the mask, and then what I do is I add the mask over it. Now, in this case, this is this is a one of our more famous masks, and that is Batman's mask. And now Batman's mask, the, one of the main things about Batman's mask is that it covers his face and it also covers his nose. Now there's a few ways of doing uh, the, the mask over the nose. One way that I, that I do a lot is to kind of and this is actually a little bit of a variation on the way Jim Aparo used to uh, do it. And that is by doing like a sharp line down the center of the nose. And then for me, one of the things that really helps sell Batman's mask is the these areas of black that seem to come down uh, underneath the eyes, over the eyes, and, and on the forehead. And that really... That to me is, is almost essential. I'm also one of those who kind of likes the, the throwback of eyebrows on Batman's mask. Not, not totally Adam West-like. We don't have to go there. But I think it, it gives Batman a little bit of a, of a sterner expression. And then the big black area on the forehead like that. Now, one of the things... That of course that you have to do with Batman is the ears, and what I like to do sometimes is to just give the ears a little added dimension. So if you see, you know, I, there's the side, this side, and then a, a another side that that ducks in, and on this side, go like that. This side is in shadow. Sometimes I'll, I'll do a little bit of a cast shadow off the ear, crossing over the head. I like to indicate that there are real human ears underneath that cowl, just slightly. And then very much in the tradition of the great Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, I like to almost just make Batman's head and neck almost into one solid shape. I always gave uh, Batman some prominent uh, cheekbones under underneath his mask. I'm not one who needs a, an overly stern, dour Batman either. 
as is popular these days. I don't mind if my Batman actually has a good time doing his job. It doesn't need to be miserable to everybody. And a little bit of a cash shed out underneath. And that becomes that becomes Batman. So there we go. Once again, you, you, when you when you start by drawing the head, okay, you, you're building a foundation for yourself, and you could you could put the the mask on over that. Okay. Now a similar mask, and actually, this is one of my favorite masks. One of my favorite superhero costumes all the way around and again start out with that face build the nose and we're going to be covering the nose up again and the eyes and the eyes typically with this mask we only see and very much like batman's mask we only see the whites of the eyes and the mouth and the, now this this character is known for generally having a good time doing his job. He, he's not one to be, not one of the grim and gritty types. He's also handsome with high cheekbones, and a square lantern jaw, which is very appropriate for this guy because he is Green Lantern. Hal Jordan, the best Green Lantern. Although I give... I'll give uh, Alan Scott some, uh, a little room there. Alan Scott being the Golden Age Green Lantern. Green Lantern, his costume, um, I'm talking about the Silver Age one, the classic Hal Jordan Green Lantern. His costume was designed by the great Gil Kane. Gil Kane, uh, one of the best costume designers ever. Bill Kane did uh, the Hal Jordan. He did uh, uh, the great uh, Captain Marvel, Marvel's Captain Marvel, you know, the, the red and blue outfit from the 70s. That, I believe, was Gil Kane. Um, Gil Kane was a, was a beautiful costume designer. Um, and I remember reading once that he had a philosophy when it came to, to designing costumes was that he wanted the costume to be interesting enough for an adult to enjoy, but simple enough that a little kid could still draw his favorite character. And I always thought that was a great philosophy and very clearly that philosophy is in dire need today. Now that philosophy's out the window, actually. Not digging how Jordan's hair here. He's looking kind of old. I'm gonna make his hair a little fluffier. Never be afraid to erase. Although this isn't a video on hair or even on how to draw Green Lantern. But I just couldn't live with that hair. I'm not crazy about this hair either, but anyway. So Green Lantern's mask, kind of like Batman, in that it does fit over over the nose we don't see much of his nose and then it wraps up around the eyes so I like to darken his mask too at least above the eyes and then as we come down maybe shade that side of it Break it up, let it get dark, and let it get dark. And also leave a little bit of a highlight on the cheek. And that becomes Hal Jordan. One of my favorite characters, Green Lantern. He should always have, he should always have a, a, a book. He should always have a series going. 
It's not the DC Universe without a Green Lantern book. Two books Green uh, DC should always have going. Not just Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And yeah, those, those should always be out there. But they should always, always have a Green Lantern and a Flash book as well. And it shouldn't be so hard to write those in interesting ways. Especially a Green Lantern book. That should be a... That is, that is shooting fish in a barrel. So, there is... Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. Maybe, maybe shape his eye a little bit more. And his lip a little bit less. I like, I like to draw Hal Jordan smiling. He's a guy who really enjoys his job. Flying through space, exploring. It's a little better. Okay. Now, another mask. Maybe we could get this done. And this one, this one could actually be suitable for two separate characters. But we'll probably, we'll give it to the one who's, who's most famous for it. And again... There'll be similarities. The the theme for today's characters is masks that go over the nose. Over the nose. Now this guy, yeah, he's he's really he's famous for never being happy. And again, drawing the whole head. Get in that chin. Give him cheeks. And now these large areas, these big flaps that go over his eyes, and that kind of gives away who this one is. That's right, he's the best there is at what he does, and that is Wolverine. This is Wolverine in his classic outfit, with the big flared eye pieces, and these pieces are black. I like to throw in a little bit of a reflection into them. Although they could be totally flat black. This side as well. Again, a little bit of a reflection on the cheek and on the flap. And then give him his cheekbones. And really that's all there is to his mask. A little bit comes down, down part of the jawline. And we've got ourselves a Wolverine. So what do you think? How are how are how are these masks? Am I am I missing any good masks? Are there are there other masks that I that I should be getting to? If I am, please let me know. This is uh this is part two. I'm not opposed to doing a part three if you guys can can give me some good candidates. Um, a lot of masks are just variations on other masks. You know, I, I could throw a, a bunch of these and we could see like some of the ones that we did tonight. You know, they're all over the nose. They go over the nose. Uh, they obscure the eyes. They, they leave the character with the whites of their eyes. So there's, there's a lot of similarities and a lot of masks, as I said, they're, they're very interrelated and one can lead to the other. So... If, if there are other masks that you'd like me to tackle, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments below. And let me know what you thought about this video. So, thanks again to Robert for the suggestion. If you got any other ideas, please let me know. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Please click like, subscribe, and come back for the next video. And as always, keep drawing, everybody. Keep drawing. Bye-bye.